SOD Phase 4 is finally here, and we are going into Molten Core today with our Arcane Mage. Let's have a look at everything we need to know to hit the ground running and come up against Ragnaros Successful. Starting off with the stat priority, we are going to want to hit the 16% spell hit as Molten Core bosses are three levels above us. There are going to be a few ways that we can actually help alleviate this that isn't from our gear, and that is going to be the talents and runes we're taking. I'll show you why shortly, of course. After that, it's going to be spell or arcane damage. Now, it is going to depend on what spells we're using. Instant or short cast spells or even AoE spells will get less benefit from this than longer cast spells. However, it's still a really, really great stat that we can have. After that, we want to increase our critical strike, intellect, and then spirit and MB5 for a little bit of mana if we need it. Now, looking at the talent build, we have really one core way of going into this, and that is improving the Balefire Bolt rune that we will be taking. It's a Chimera effect, meaning it uses all three trees, and all three trees will actually go into affecting how much damage and how effective it is. So, most of them are going to be in the Arcane Tree. Of course, we are doing Arcane Mage here. Arcane Subtlety reduces Threat and Chance to resist our spells, and Arcane Focus reduces massively the amount they can resist our Arcane spells. Arcane Concentration gives us a chance to go into Clear Casting State so that our next spell is instant and free, and Arcane Resilience increases the armor we have by our Intellect at a grading of 50%. Arcane Meditation helps with mana regen while casting, woohoo for us! And Arcane Mind similarly just increases our maximum mana by 10%. Then we've got some really interesting talents that we take. Presence of Mind, which is a cooldown we can use. Your next mage spell with a casting time less than 10 seconds becomes instant. Then we go into Arcane Instability, causing your spell damage and crit chance to increase by 3%. And Arcane Power, one of our most formidable cooldowns available. When activated, your spells deal 30% more damage while costing 30% more to cast. And that will last a short duration of 15 seconds. And we are going to use this on cooldown and when we go into the fight to max out our damage. Let's now look at the other points we're putting into Fire and Frost. So we've got 5 out of 5 into Impact giving our fire spells a chance to stun the target. We don't care too much about this, and really we're using it to get down to go into Ignite, where your critical strikes from fire cause the target to burn for an additional 40% of the damage over 4 seconds. And remember, that will work on our Balefire Bolt with its Chimera effect, using all three trees. Lastly, Frost Warding in Frost, increasing your armor and resistances, and then Elemental Precision, reducing the chance they can resist your Frost Spells by 6%. And lastly, the big juicy one, Ice Shards, increasing the Critical Strike bonus of your Frost Spells by 100%, and again, that will impact Balefire Bolt. Now let's have a look at the runes we're going to be using. On the head, I like to go for Advanced Warding. Your Mana Shield, etc. can now be cast on any friendly target and absorb 100% increased damage, with Mana Shield consuming 50% less mana per damage absorbed, and additionally, your Remove Lesser Curse is replaced with Greater Remove Curse. You could also go for Hot Streak if you really just want to go for the pure damage here. Anytime you score two non-periodic spell criticals in a row, using Balefire Bolt, which is the one we'll be using in Arcane, your next Pyroblast spell would be instant. However, we can't go for that because we don't have Pyroblast. So even if you do want to go for a pure DPS rune here, you know, using a Balefire Bolt, etc., there's no actual benefit to using it after using those spells. The buff it's going to give you isn't actually going to do anything. The same with Temporal Anomaly, it's not actually adding any DPS increase, and the same with Deep Freeze. I mean, you could use Deep Freeze, but yeah, overall, it's just not really... You get the point, it's not worth it. On the chest, we're going for Burnout, increasing your spell critical strike of all spells. However, they are have an additional mana cost there, but that's absolutely fine. Balefire Bolt, of course, the big daddy we've been talking about throughout this whole video so far. Basically, it gets more powerful every time you use it, but slowly takes away your spirit. If it gets to 10 ta stacks, it will kill you, meaning you only want to go to 8 or 9 stacks. 8 if you want to be safe, 9 if you're concentrating and won't accidentally do a 10th. And this is the one that has that Chimera effect using the talents from all different trees, etc. And this is going to underpin the rotation massively that I'll be showing you. In the hand, we're going for Arcane Blast, a fantastic AoE spell we'll be using. Blasts the target of energy, dealing damage. Each time you cast Arcane Blast, the damage and healing of other Arcane spells is increased by 15%. 
and mana cost of Arcane Blast specifically, so not the other spells, is massively increased. This can stack up to four times, or last six seconds, or until any other Arcane Damage or Healing spell is cast. So you can use Arcane Blast, boom, 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 massively increasing the damage of your other spells, and then go into a massive whopper of an Arcane spell to deal huge damage. And I'm going to explain how you'll be using that shortly. We're going to go for Missile Barrage here, giving your Arcane Blast, again, the one we've just spoken about, a 40% chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missiles by 50%, reduce the mana cost by 100, and the missiles then fire every 0.5 seconds. Icy Veins is the cooldown we're picking here. It's really simply a great haste increased cooldown that we can use with our other cooldowns. Spell Power, again, really obvious one, increases the Critical Strike damage bonus of all spells by 50%. Arcane Barrage, another arcane-focused one, which we like, launching several missiles at the enemy target, dealing damage, and it has a 20% chance to trigger Missile Barrage. If you can't remember what that is, that is this one over here. Just to recap, it gives your Arcane Blast a 40% chance to reduce the channel duration of your Arcane Missiles, etc. So that can happen off your Arcane Barrage. Lastly, we're going into Frost Specialization for 6% increase hit, an arcane 6% chance on specialization there too, just helping out my Balefire Bolt, etc. on there for getting our hit chance up. So how are we going to actually put these all together into the rotation then? Well, starting off at the top, we're going to go in with our cooldowns, activating arcane power and icy veins if we have ruined it, and any other cooldowns you have on gear or trinkets, etc. to maximize our damage. Then we want to be getting up our bale fire bolts. Again, only taking it to 8 or 9, making sure we don't go to 10 or it'll kill us, so that we can get maximum damage out in that cooldown window. Then we're going to cast Arcane Blast until we get a Missile Barrage proc for our Arcane Missiles. Then, once we get that proc, use your Arcane Missiles to consume Missile Barrage and the Arcane Blast stacks that we will now have. You can consume it with Arcane Barrage instead if you already have four stacks and you didn't get a proc on your Arcane Blast. Then, looking at AoE, it's really simple. Use Living Flame on cooldown and Arcane Explosion. These are two different runes that I didn't actually show you before. So Icy Veins, you would swap out for Living Flame. Basically, it just wiggles towards the target, doing, you know, leaving a, a, a trail of fire in its wake. And then, of course, we just have our basic Arcane Explosion to go boom, 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 and do a load of damage in an AoE sort of, you know, area around us. And that is pretty much it for Arcane Mage. It is the simplest one of the three. If you are looking to see how to play the others, you know, Fire and Frost, do check out the playlist here because I have also released those for you. And if you do need extra help on Arcane or any other class, please consider joining the Patreon. It really, really helps support this channel, and I can give you one-on-one -on -one advice in DMs over there should you need it, along with lots of extra resources for WoW, and also opening up a VIP channel in the Discord where you can get support as well.